This video tutorial introduces the evidence for human origins. It wasn't until the publication of The Descent of Man in 1871, 12 years after On the Origin of Species, that Charles Darwin wrote about the evolution of humans. In The Descent of Man, he hypothesized that humans and modern apes share a common ancestor that lived in Africa. He predicted that fossil evidence would one day be found in Africa to support his hypothesis. And he was right. So what are humans? Humans, along with familiar species such as lemur, gibbons and chimpanzees, are all primates. The image on the slide in front of you shows the primate family tree. Humans belong to the primate order. And Darwin had observed that humans shared many similarities with the African great apes. DNA studies have since shown that chimpanzees and bonobos are humans' closest living relatives. We share a common ancestor with them about 7 million years ago. Primates are hundreds of species that form a mammalian order characterised by many traits, including forward-facing eyes, generalised teeth, collarbones, and having nails instead of claws on their fingers and toes. Members of our own species, Homo sapiens, are distinguished from other primates by three primary traits. Larger brains, bipedalism and tool use. Scientists have examined the fossil record to understand when and where these three distinctly human characteristics evolved. I'm going to briefly introduce some of the earliest fossil finds. On the slide in front of you, the image shows some of these major fossil finds and it picks out um, three key hominid fossils. Firstly, early Homo, which is known as Homo habilis, as well as Lucy, which is Australopithecus africanus, and Ardi, or Ardipithecus ramidus. They're all shown here on a geological timeline. These three species each belong to a group or genus that also contains other species not shown on this particular figure. Now, you can note that MYA here means millions of years ago. Firstly, I'm just going to mention a little bit more about Homo habilis before they're mentioning Lucy and Ardi. Dr. Lewis Leakey published in the journal Nature in 1959, announcing the discovery of the 1.76 million year old Zinjanthropus boisei, today classified as Australopithecus boisei. For three decades, the Leakeys had been searching for evidence of human evolution in Olduvai Gorge in Tanzania, and that's what's shown on the image in front of you. But they found only stone tools. Finally, they thought they had found the toolmaker. In the Nature paper, Dr. Leakey proposed that this species was the oldest yet discovered maker of tools. But later finds would soon cause him to rethink this inference. The Leakeys concluded that the Janthropus was the tool maker because the skull was found with stone tools in the same layer of sediment. However, two years after, the then Janthropus discovery, the Leakey's own son, Jonathan, discovered a new slightly older fossil, 1.8 million years old. And this new fossil led the Leakey's to conclude that this was the real tool maker, and they named it Homo habilis, or handyman. The next key fossil discovery was Lucy. On November 20, um, 24th, 1974, Paleoanthropologist Dr. Johansson discovered almost half of the fossilized skeleton 
of a hominid that lived nearly 3.2 million years ago. He nicknamed the fossil Lucy and later included it in a new species which he called Australopithecus afarensis. Bones of this species indicated that Australopithecus afarensis was bipedal. The shape of Lucy, Lucy's pelvis and knees allowed her to balance on one leg at a time, a requirement for efficient upright walking on two legs. Finally, we'll look at Ardi. An international team discovered the partial skeleton of 4.4 million year old Ardipithecus ramidus, nicknamed Ardi in 1994. Dr. White described the species as neither a chimp nor man, but what did he really mean by that? Ardi had a rigid outer part of the foot, likely used as a lever for pushing off during upright walking. In contrast, the bones of chimpanzee feet were more flexible, allowing the feet to be used more like hands. But surprisingly, Ardi's feet also had an opposable large toe that could be used for grasping while moving about in the trees. The upper part of Ardi's pelvis was flared out on each side, which supported muscles necessary for upward walking to maintain balance and forward motion. However, the lower part of the pelvis was more like that of a chimp than that of a modern human, anchoring muscles important for climbing. 